Hey everyone, Ryan here, and if you haven't been living under a rock, you might know that The Mandalorian Season 3 has just wrapped up, and I thought it'd be a really fun video to go through and grade each of the LEGO Star Wars Mandalorian Season 3 sets based on their accuracy to the actual episodes that we have now seen. Now, it's no secret at this point that LEGO Star Wars designs things ahead of time, and as such, with things like The Mandalorian Season 3, they're working a lot based off concept art and rough story ideas, so they usually don't have the whole picture of what's happening for the scene or with the particular vehicles for their sets when they're designing them. They just have some basic info. This causes things like the 2015 Kylo Ren shuttle that was completely the wrong color and didn't have the wings folding out feature that was later fixed in 2019. Or even in some cases, a Lego Star Wars set never even shows up in the movie. But of course, it was there in the concept art. It just didn't make the final cut. And so in this video, we'll be going over all four Mandalorian season three sets to grade them based on their accuracy. Again, not whether or not they're a good set or not. This is purely an accuracy based video, which is something LEGO strives for very heavily. Now the first Mando Season 3 set is Mando's N1 Starfighter Microfighter that includes the Mandalorian and Grogu, and while the character choice is perfect for the particular vehicle, the vehicle itself, because it's in Microfighter scale, isn't entirely accurate, and I was gonna leave this one out of the video entirely, but since it's a Season 3 set and I wanted to do all Season 3 sets, here it is, and the minifigures are pretty dang accurate, the ship itself not, and obviously for good reason, but that doesn't change the fact that it's not accurate. Uh, so I guess this one gets an F, it just has to because the ship looks really hardly like it does in universe, but that's not something to hold against a microfighter. That's not the point of this video though. I'm just covering my bases to avoid angry commenters. Getting into some larger sets though, we have the pirate snub fighter and this one has a spot on design. I think the snub fighter in universe versus what we see in the Lego version is about as close as you can get for a Lego Star Wars set of this scale. The biggest drawback of the design potentially is the windshield piece. While I feel like it's about the right size, the shaping of it isn't entirely perfect. And again, grading on accuracy, it's not necessarily perfectly accurate. And so we'll shave a few points off on that windshield, although I do really think the windshield fits this ship regardless. When it comes to the minifigures, our vein minifigure, I think is about perfect. The only criticism you could really make here is that in the show, it looks like he has a bit of a lighter skin tone than the actual minifigure that we ended up getting, so maybe we shave 1% off for the skin tone of Vayne. And the pilot, while it looks really good to me, I went back and tried to rewatch a lot of scenes. I could not find a pilot dressed in all yellow that looked like Vayne, just didn't see it anywhere, so hopefully I'm not wrong in that, but assuming that pilot just never showed up in the show, the pilot would be inaccurate. It's not a bad figure, but it is inaccurate to the set or the ship from the show. Ultimately though, based on what we see in the show, the ship and the Vayne minifigure are pretty dang spot on, and I gotta give the snub fighter an A for accuracy. Get it? Like the video and I won't make any more bad puns. The next slightly larger Mandalorian season three set is the spider tank. And this one is littered with inaccuracies. Most unfortunately, but clearly again, because they didn't have the information ahead of time, at least I hope so. I hope Lego didn't purposely omit all of the cool things that could have been in this set. But the first and most obvious to a lot of people is we're missing the Grievous-like droid. One of the coolest parts about this scene and kind of the mystique to it was having this weird creature living beneath Mandalore. And that creature is just not included in this set even though he is, or it, is the thing that pilots the spider tank and basically gives it life. So not having that in the set just completely missing to me. I mean, you gotta have that and it's just not there. So that's a big L for accuracy. Now when it comes to the spider tank itself, while the build design of it seems pretty dang accurate, like it's got the claws, it's got the correct number of feet and all that sort of stuff, it does feel like the color of it is wrong in the show while the lighting is a bit tough to tell for sure. It definitely looks a bit more rustic than the Lego model. Now, Lego pieces obviously are usually all just one color, so it's hard to get that type of look, but definitely integrating some sort of rust feeling to the build would have made it look a bit more accurate. Another big loss here to me though is Grogu's pram, just completely not here, even though there have been existing Lego Grogu pram designs in the past, it does not make its way into this set. And that's really unfortunate because it's a big integral part of this scene is Grogu escaping on his pram. So definitely felt like that should have been here and it's just not. Finally, the rotisserie build for Mando is just completely missing. The thing where Mando is just suspended in air so 
that the creature can draw all of his blood out. That that whole part of the scene is missing. I feel like a lot of the conflict, you know, Lego sets for Star Wars sometimes can be really into the conflict, is just missing from this set. They completely omitted a lot of what would be accurate to the scene. Now, the three minifigures that do exist in the set, being Grogu, Mando, and Bo-Katan, are pretty dang accurate in and of themselves. Like I said, what's inaccurate about this set more so is just what's missing, and it's missing a lot. I think I gotta give this one a D on accuracy. While the spider tank is a pretty good build, the minifigs are nice, it's just missing so many things that were completely integral to the scene and what was happening that you, you just gotta believe that LEGO would have included had they known. LEGO Star Wars is no stranger to doing random inaccurate things for no reason, but I feel like this set isn't that, but it still gets a D for accuracy. The final set that was finished before the show ended is the Mandalorian Fang Fighter versus TIE Interceptor, and I firmly believe this is the best of the four Mando Season 3 sets. However, I don't think it's the most accurate. It is not going to receive an A grade, and let's explain why. Firstly, as far as the TIE Interceptor is concerned, I think it's a perfect build. It is incredible looking. It's also very fun to play with, but, you know, as far as accuracy goes, just beautiful. If this was a TIE Interceptor only set, it'd be getting an A+. Now, the figure for the TIE Interceptor is the TIE Pilot, and a lot of people after watching Episode 7 were worried that the TIE Pilot was inaccurate and wanted the newer Stormtrooper design that we saw taking off towards the TIE Interceptors, and what turns out in Episode 8 is that there actually is a TIE Pilot inside of the TIE Interceptor, so that is an accurate figure for the build. However, R2-E6, the Imperial Astromech droid, why? Why not just include one of the cooler Stormtroopers or even better Moff Gideon from Season 3? Those two figures would have fit way better than an Imperial Astromech droid, which, to be honest, is really lame. Even though in my review I did say I think it's the best Imperial Astromech droid they've made, it doesn't really fit in the set, and there were obviously much much cooler options with Moff Gideon and that new Stormtrooper design. Now in the set, Mando is given the Darksaber. However, in the last two episodes of season three, Mando doesn't have the Darksaber because he gave it back to Bo-Katan. So since Bo has the Darksaber at this point, Mando really shouldn't have it in this set. If they were designing this a year from now, he wouldn't. And obviously during episode eight as well, they destroy the Darksaber. So at some point in there, it just disappears completely anyways. Darksaber aside though, the Mando minifigure is beautiful great figure for the set, very accurate to what we see in the show. And then the final minifig is the Fleet Commander, which is a nice addition to the set as well. He's definitely part of that whole scene and sequence, and having him in there makes a ton of sense to me. Again, given that those Mandos ended up fighting the new Stormtrooper design armor or whatever, it would have made a ton more sense instead of that Imperial Astromech droid going against the Fleet Commander to have the Fleet Commander fight the Imperial Stormtrooper designs. Now the Fang Fighter hardly showed up at all. Some people in fact didn't see it at all, but it was in the background a little bit. Like you could see it riding alongside the gauntlets in a lot of cases, and that's about it. Now what ended up happening in the show is the TIE Interceptors never ended up fighting the Fang Fighters. They flew right past each other in the clouds in a rather confusing sequence. I didn't really understand why they didn't meet and battle it out in the skies. So as the show goes, these two ships never really met and therefore having them battling it out within a Lego set is inaccurate. So the other thing with the Fang Fighter is a lot of people noted that in Rebels, the cockpit kind of rotated about. And as far as I can tell in this show, it doesn't. But again, it is really hard to tell. It's really distant in the background. You don't get a lot of really high quality imagery of it and certainly no real good motion shots where you could tell if it was rotating or anything. So I think at the end of the day we can't really tell definitively but I would assume that Lego has some slightly better concept art to work off for the design and that it doesn't actually spin about. It is supposed to be just one solid slab of a design and that's what the Lego set ended up being but we don't know 110% for sure, I suppose. So I gotta give the Fang versus TIE Interceptor a B. The TIE Interceptor doing a lot of the heavy lifting here as far as this set's accuracy goes, but overall I think they did a decent job with the season three sets for accuracy. I think they did a particularly poor job with some of the character inclusions with some of these sets. It's missing a lot that could have been there. And again, this video isn't meant to say these sets are bad because they're inaccurate. It's simply a video assessing the reality of how did the Lego sets pan out 
versus what we ended up seeing in the show during season three. If you wanna see another video like this later this year for the Ahsoka show and its Lego Star Wars sets, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video, and let me know what you think down in the comments section below. See ya.